this is Miss Pulliam, and today we're going to read Army Brats. This book is a new book, and it's by Daphne Benitez Grab. Okay, let's get started. We'll read a few chapters at a time. Chapter 1. The light blue minivan carrying the Bailey family, their dog, Cupcake, and their most essential belongings was cruising up the winding mountain road shaded by pine, aspen, and black walnut trees, when a loud shout burst from the way back. Stop the car! Rosie, the youngest Bailey, hollered. We have a DEFCON! 27 back here. DEFCON 27. There's no such thing as a DEFCON 27. 12-year-old Tom announced wearily to Rosie. Well, Dad pulled the van to the side of the road. Rosie had recently decided to start using army lingo in honor of the family's move to Fort Patrick. The problem was that Rosie kept forgetting the right terms and making up her own confusing everyone. And I don't think Cupcake needing a pit stop is a DEFCON anything. Charlie added as she fumbled with the car door. She'd been getting car sick from the twisty road, so she was first to scramble out of the van. <clears throat> Smell that mountain air, Dad said appreciatively, as the rest of the family piled out onto the side of the road. All Charlotte smelled was a bunch of trees, but she nodded anyway. Good for the lungs, he went on, pounding his chest for a moment and then coughing a bit. Charlotte looked at, Tom, looked at Tom, and they both giggled. Don't know my own strength, do I? Dad asked cheerfully, his dark red hair blowing slightly in the breeze. Thanks to Dad, Tom, and Charlotte were redheads too. But while Dad and Tom had hair that was burnished copper, Charlotte's was a light strawberry blonde that came with pale skin and freckles. She hated almost as much as the sunscreen she had to slather on every time she stepped out in the sunlight. Did anyone see my glasses? Dad asked. I think they slid into the back seat when we took that sharp turn outside of D.C. Charlotte looked in the van. The big plastic glasses Dad claimed were stylish, despite Rosie's insistence on calling them clown glasses, were resting just under her seat. She reached in and grabbed them. Thanks, sweetie, Dad said, taking them from her. And I like your nails. Very appropriate for the occasion. Charlotte grinned as she held out a hand so Dad could fully admire the tiny white army stars she painted on each nail in honor of their move. She loved giving herself fancy and unusual manicures and had a big collection of brightly colored polish. Very snazzy, Dad said, which made both Tom and Charlotte snort a bit. Dad was big on old-fashioned words like snazzy. How much longer till we get there, Charlotte asked. She wasn't sure if it was the mountaineer or just standing on solid ground, but the swirling in her stomach was settling down. About 15 more minutes, Tom answered. Charlotte knew he had been keeping a close eye on the GPS, guiding them toward their new home. She was familiar with all of Tom's travel habits, since their family, like all Army families, relocated so often. Charlotte, who had recently turned 10 and three quarters, and now officially considered herself 11, was always dismayed when her parents announced a move. No matter how often it happened, it was hard to leave friends and the familiar and the familiar behind her for new. That would be hard. The one thing that made the move easier, of course, was her siblings. They might fight sometimes, but walking into school on the first day was always a million times easier with Tom by her side. Though even, though even that thought made Charlotte anxious, because this year Tom, who had dyslexia, was getting extra help at lunchtime, leaving Charlotte to face the cafeteria on her own for the very first time ever. And she was dreading that. I think we're all set, Mom said, leading the way out of the woods. She was dressed in khaki pants and a soft t-shirt. But Charlotte knew that as soon as they reached the house, Mom would change into her officer's uniform to report for duty. Roger that, Dad said, giving Rosie a high five. 
Delicate Rosie, with her heart-shaped face and silky black hair, looked like a tiny angel. But in her case, looks were quite deceiving. <laughs> Charlotte remembered when Mom had sent home the photo of three-year-old Rosie, whom she had met on the streets of Beijing, China. Rosie had slipped away from the orphanage where she lived, so she could spend the afternoon pretending to be a dog, darting about and nipping people on the ankle. Everyone else on the sidewalk was annoyed, but Mom fell instantly in love and decided their family was the perfect fit for the energetic toddler barking up a storm. Since Rosie was an older child, and Charlotte had always suspected because Rosie was so high energy, the adoption was expedited. Before they knew it, the Baileys had become a family of five. If Rosie had turned out to be as sugar sweet as that first photo promised, things might not have worked out so well. But Rosie had the mind and wits of a supervillain, and much, of, much to the admiration of her new siblings, quickly established herself as a force to be reckoned with. And now, as Charlotte climbed back into the van, she knew she couldn't imagine life without Rosie, even if she was driving everyone crazy with her, her new army terms. Rosie settled into the back seat, Cupcake's head in her lap. Mom, does everyone on the post get to fly around in, bird, in birdies? Rosie asked. Ever since she had found out about the move, Rosie was full of questions about life on base. Helicopters are birds, not birdies, Charlotte corrected, as she shifted in her seat. She kind of wished Cupcake would sit with her. Snuggling their big dog with her barrel chest and short tan fur was always comforting. We won't be flying birds around post, Mom added, turning to smile at all three of her kids, but there's going to be a lot of other really cool stuff. Though the Baileys had lived in a lot of places, this would be their first time living on post. That means on the base itself. Mom had explained that the base, which was in Virginia, not too far from Washington, D.C., was like a small town with its own school, snack bar, pool, library, and even a movie theater. And everyone who lived there was either in the Army or a military dependent which even Rosie knew was a family member of someone in the army. Is Rex there? Rosie asked. Cupcake wants to have a play date with him. Rex was a combat dog mom had met in Afghanistan. She'd sent home a video of the big German shepherd playing frisbee with his handler during a break, and the whole family had been taken with him. No, sweetie, Rex is still working in, in Afghanistan, mom said, because he's an MVP dog. Rosie confirmed. MWD, Charlotte said, grinning. Military working dog. Though he was an MVP in that Frisbee game. That means most valuable player. Tom laughed, but Rosie was not amused and gave her sister a sharp look. <laughs> then turned to Cupcake. Too bad Rex won't be there, Rosie told their dog, but I bet you'll make other friends. I think that's true, Dad said as he adjusted the sun visor. All of you guys will make good friends at Fort Patrick. Charlotte noticed him glancing in the rearview mirror at Rosie when he said this. Her parents had explained to her that Rosie had issues connecting with her peers. In regular English, that meant Rosie wasn't good at making friends. Something Charlotte had already noticed because Rosie liked, liked being in charge of everything and often interrupted. Two things none of the kids in the neighborhood had liked. Rosie wasn't concerned about this, but Mom and Dad were. Signing Rosie up for friendship groups and sessions with the school counselor. So far, it had not made a difference. Though Charlotte, though Charlotte knew her parents were hoping things would change in, at the post school, which was small and made up of all Army kids. So, no pictures, sorry. But good book. And, and we can video chat with a, Mar a Mariah, right? Rosie asked for what seemed like the millionth time. She wasn't as used to moving around as her older siblings were. Absolutely, Mom said. A Mariah was the super nice high school student who had lived two houses down and sometimes babysat for Rosie. I know you'll want to show her your new room. 
and Tom can talk to his friends, and Charlotte can call Brianna and Daisy anytime she wants. Will we use codes to get into buildings, Rosie asked. Back to her line of questions about life on post. No, we'll just use the door, Tom said, like regular people. <laughs> Apparently, Rosie did not care for this his tone. Mom's a spy, she said loftily, not regular people. Her eyes narrowed as everyone in the van laughed. I'm not exactly a spy, Rosie. I'm not exactly a spy, Rosie Posey, Mom said. I'm military intelligence. Tom said, that's a spy, Rosie said, arching an eyebrow at her brother. I'm in human intelligence, so I do gather information and try to figure out ways to connect to locals when I'm in the field, Mom said diplomatically, to find the best ways to save Army and civilian lives. And to find the bad guys, right? Tom asked. Right, Mom confirmed. Charlotte felt the familiar swell of pride that always blossomed inside when her mom talked about her work. Lots of moms had cool jobs, but their mom was a major in the U.S. Army, protecting their country, and it didn't get any cooler than that. So that means you sneak around and listen in on conversations like Tom and Charlotte did when they wanted to find out what Mrs. Watkins was hiding in the basement, Rosie said. She smiled sweetly when both her siblings glared at her. Mom raised an eyebrow. Well, my job is kind of the opposite, she said. I try to connect with people to make friends so I can find out how things work on the ground. That information helps our GIs do a better, safer job. But I'm not sure the same can be said for stalking poor Mrs. Watkins. She gave her two older children a pointed look. And Charlotte squirmed, gazing down at her hands. Rosie's making it sound like a, a very, I'm sorry, a way bigger deal than it was, Tom said quickly. And it was a lame mission. Anyway, because she just had a bunch of homemade jam down there. She gave us some jam on toast, Rosie said, smiling at the memory. So it all ended well, Charlotte said, hopefully. Mom gave Charlotte her penetrating stare. The one that always made Charlotte feel like mom. Feel like mom could read every thought swimming around in her brain. I'll let this one go, mom said finally. But no sneaking around Fort Patrick. You need to stay away from the buildings that are off limits to civilians. Do they have some kind of top secret military stuff in them? Tom asked, leaning forward eagerly. Charlotte was leaning forward too, despite her herself. The situation with Mrs. Watkins had actually been a bit of a mess. In the end, Tom and Charlotte offered to mow her lawn for most of August so she wouldn't rat them out. After that, Charlotte, who had been the one to formulate their failed plan of action, had vowed to hang up her spy shoes forever. But as she considered the possibility of forbidden buildings with top secret things inside, she suddenly wondered if she'd hung up hung them up too soon. I don't want to bear, I don't want to hear anything about the three of you poking your noses where they don't belong or pestering people with questions, mom said in her voice. That reminded them that she was an officer in the United States Army. On post, we follow the rules, always and no matter what. You guys are going to be a lot more independent living at Fort Patrick, but you need to use that freedom wisely. Tom gave a whoop. Whoop, whoop. And Charlotte couldn't stop grinning. More freedom sounded fantastic. She was about to ask more, but just then the minivan rounded a curve, and there in front of them was Fort Patrick. That was a long chapter. That was chapter one. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll do chapter two separately.